comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He'll come around when times ring out that it's Christmas morn again. Peace on earth will come to you all if we just follow the light. So let's give thanks to the Lord above, cause Santa Claus comes to watching Miss Angelie TV where we talk about everything and when I mean everything I mean like girl we are already on story time number two which means day two of story miss as you guys know first story time if you haven't um, watched it go ahead and watch that because I want y'all to watch every single thing because it's kind of like in order my last story time was about the time that my son got kidnapped so if you haven't watched that go ahead and check that out right now and then come back to this video I was in a relationship um, a lot of y'all may know about this relationship because I briefly um, exposed this particular person to my YouTube channel for um, for a little while. Um, this person, we're gonna call him by the way, um, Ghost. Um, yeah, his name is Ghost. That's what we're gonna call him. We call him Fuckboy too. I've since then obviously deleted the video of this person. I'm sure a lot of y'all know. I didn't expect it to turn into this type of relationship. I always like, not necessarily joked around with it, but casually, I guess you can say, say like, oh yeah, girl, you know, I've been cheated on or whatever. Ain't no nigga ever put their hands on me before. I can remember myself always saying that. I guess I kind of thought it would never happen to me. Honestly, I will say that I thought it would never happen to me. I thought I would never be in a particular situation like that. Um, but we're going to get to that point whenever we get to that point. This video is basically just the introduction of um, this person. Because I've never spoke about this person on my channel besides that time we did a video together. Which that video has not been deleted and it's been deleted for quite a while now. Y'all used to me with these, you know, comical story times and stuff like that. I'm gonna like warn y'all for the next few weeks of this month, um, it's gonna get real. How we met, I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> we met on Twitter. At this time, I was really, really active on my Twitter. Um, Freddie and I, which is my son's father, y'all know, if y'all watch my other story times, y'all will know who Freddie is. Freddie, that's his, that's not his actual name, but that's his name for my story times. Um, Freddie and I had, hadn't been together for probably about three months, I will say, before him and I actually got, before Ghost and I, rather, actually got together. And um, during that time before Ghost and I got together, I was by myself, living by myself, obviously, because, you know, Freddie had already moved out because we were no longer together. And it was just me, myself, and my, my kids send me myself and my kids y'all know what I mean I was just doing my own thing like I would go to Nikki house you know um Nikki which is my sister my you know my girl I, I don't even want to call her my best friend because best friend is like that's gay um she's my sister so I'm um, like my sister for real like she over she exceeds the best friend expectations anyway so I would never put her in the best friend category I would hang around with Nikki a lot through this period of time where um, I was single. I was single for about three months. I wasn't single for that long. I should have been single for a long time. But me getting out of a four year relationship, being so used to being close to somebody, next to somebody every day basically, I was lonely, I will say. And I didn't want to be the type to always, you know, to have like different niggas coming in my house and stuff like that. I really wanted a relationship. I didn't want to be a hoe. My whole days had been over with a long time ago. The person that I wanted to be in a relationship at the time, which was Freddie, he just didn't act right. He cheated on me basically, you know, throughout the entire relationship. I let that go finally. Like it took me a long time. Honestly, y'all, I wasn't, I wasn't recording at that time. I took a break. I took a long break. Um, and y'all didn't really, I know y'all saw the whole birthday vlog, um, whenever I turned 21 and I was kind of talking about it or whatever, how I felt about it and stuff. And I think at the end of one of my videos, I had broke down, like a bitch don't never fucking cry in her videos. So, you know, like I was really going through it. I was lonely and let's move forward. I was on Twitter, doing my, doing my thing. And for some reason, I don't know why I decided to respond to this particular person, but I did because... I would always get a lot of different messages from a lot of different people. I would normally just ignore it. Um, for some reason, I didn't ignore, ignore ghosts. Whenever ghosts hit me up, 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to locate these messages. I'm going to try my best to try to locate these messages because I never deleted it. Um, so if I found it, find the messages, I will post them in this video. He hit me up first, obviously. He was following me. I wasn't following him because I got a lot of followers on Twitter. I wasn't following him, but whenever he messaged me, he was like, hey, gorgeous. That's exactly what he said. He said, hey, gorgeous with like some emojis and some something like that. I responded and I was like, hey, what's up? And he was like, nothing much. I think he, he, um, he also asked me how old I was. I told him at the time I was 21. Um, he was 22 at the time. I asked him how old he was. He asked me where I was from. I was like, I'm from New Orleans, but I live in Houston. He re responded back and was like, I'm from New Orleans too, but I live in Houston. I just moved to Houston. And I think that right there kind of like grasped my attention the most because I had never dated a guy from New Orleans. I had never talked to a guy from New Orleans. Uh, I had never, you know, experienced that. Oh, okay, somebody from the same city as me, you know, li live in Houston too. And so he asked me for my number. I gave him my number. So we started texting. I probably can't pull up the text messages from whenever we first started talking. Uh, I'll answer that also. I want to actually show y'all. I don't want to just talk. I want to actually show y'all. Whenever we started texting, it was like late at night. By me being alone, I couldn't really sleep at night. So I was always up like all hours of the night and then get up the next day for work. Cause y'all know I work from home. So I, I probably go to sleep at like five o'clock in the morning and then have to wake up like an hour and a half later to go to work. He asked me what part of the um, town I stayed on, and I was like, I stay on the southeast of Houston, which I don't stay on the southeast no more, by the way. And he was like, I do too. And I'm like, really? He told me like he stayed next to TSU, I think. Either that or he sent me his location or something like that. Or my dumb ass probably sent him my location. I don't know, something like that. But um, he was like, I stay 10 minutes away from you. Damn, you do? Okay. Dumb as hell, I know. But that also is what kind of made me want to talk to him even more because Every other person that like, you know, I communicated with here and there, like they either stayed on the other side of town or not in Houston at all. The fact that ghosts stayed so close to me, I was like, okay, you know, um, we talking or whatever. He seemed cool and he stayed close by, that's, that's cool. And you know, of course, like I went to his Instagram and like his Twitter and stuff just to make sure he wasn't like no creepy guy. Well, creepy is not even the word for him. He seemed like an okay person. And that's basically how we met. I'm gonna cut this short because my very next story will be the very first time we saw each other. Ladies, girls, guys, any of y'all, don't follow my footsteps. I'm not telling y'all my story to say that it's okay to meet guys online and meet them three days later like I did. I think I probably met him about three days later or something. It wasn't a week. It was really, really short. I don't encourage that at all whatsoever. Neither am I trying to justify my actions as well. I don't regret it at all. But um, I did learn from him, and I would never, you know, put myself in a position to, you know, get that close to somebody that I don't even know that fast. Before we actually met, we would be on the phone all through the night, all day, like, sleeping on the phone, too. Again, I was so lonely by myself and kind of low-key afraid because I was also dealing with things with my... Um, previous relationship and I, I didn't really feel too comfortable staying at home if you watch my last story time you would know why I didn't feel comfortable at home but eventually I did begin to stay at home but I still was kind of like you know iffy about it one time we were just talking on the phone and like he didn't hang up I don't know how he actually initiated the fact of being on the phone and again another thing I want to mention before I forget 
we were FaceTiming. We started off with phone calls. Whenever we first was getting ready to talk on the phone, he told me to call him. Because I think I told him to call me, but he was like, nah, call me. I should have knew something was up right then and there because like, why I have to call you? Why you can't call me? Basically, long story short, the reason why I had to call his motherfucking ass is because his phone was off. <laughs> he had T-Mobile. Whenever they first cut your phone off, like for a month, they allow people to be able to call you, but you can't call them if your phone is disconnected. It went from being on the phone to FaceTiming because he was always at his, because he lived with his brother. He moved, he went from um, New Orleans to Houston and he moved in with his brother and his wife and his kids. Um... So he it went from the phone call from maybe a phone call maybe like a day or two. Then after that we would just be on FaceTime and then at night like he'll like watch a movie, I'll watch a movie, then I'll fall asleep and then wake up and he'll still still be on the phone. That's how our conversations for the main for the most part went were through FaceTime because of course you could be on FaceTime with your phone being off. Why? Because you can just connect to Wi Fi and that's exactly what he was doing. He was connected to Wi Fi. Um, but I didn't catch on to that until he came to my house <laughs> and i'm gonna tell y'all that in my next story time i know this is a short story y'all not used to this but i promise you all of my stories are not gonna be this short i just want to be sure that i'm telling y'all each and everything in detail so that i won't forget anything it's no possible way i can just put this story that all the shit that i went through with this man in one story like it's no way like no way even if the story is like two hours long i'm gonna miss something so i decided to break all of these stories down um i have probably about 20 stories stories dedicated to this particular person it all ended bad as you can see how i met my abusive boyfriend he turned out to be abusive so that's the name of this story time i guess how i met my abusive boyfriend i'm not gonna get into detail how he became abusive keep watching the next story time like i said is gonna be about how we met in person for the first time and how that went and that was really weird and bloody i'm just gonna say that thank y'all so much for watching if y'all haven't subscribed i'm gonna need for you to subscribe right now because y'all let me tell y'all if you're new to my channel hey girl hey boy whatever um uh, subscribe right now because the next how many days we got left 29 stories 29 days it's only gonna get better y'all when i say better i mean proof pictures screenshots i was been supposed to upgrade to the new phone but i still have my sticks right now because i wanted to keep everything that happened like every single thing i gotta get remember to get my moral of the story because i haven't been doing that lately i normally do that moral of this particular story time is don't be no niggas off the internet, number one. Number two, if a nigga can't call you first, bitch, then something is fucking wrong. Nigga, why you can't call me? You're supposed to be the gentleman, call me. <laughs> That's what a gentleman would do, right? That's a red flag. Learn from my stories. Like, all the red flags that I'm telling y'all right now, I should have been stopped fucking with this nigga, left him at the door, but I didn't. Instead, I allowed him to come inside my door. Just don't meet no niggas or bitches. Bitches is crazy too, okay? One of them. No, I'm just playing. Don't send me your fucking location the same day y'all meet. Like, it don't matter how close y'all in distance y'all are. It could be somebody granddaddy i hope y'all enjoyed the video i love y'all for watching i'll see y'all tomorrow Bye. but you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah. we you know this is just what it's gonna be so like i said i just see about the title this is gonna be about the time my son motherfucker tried to kidnap well he did kidnap my son like what the fuck yeah, so he did. um <laughs> the last yeah, you know the last